Hi guys, Rafter here. I hope that you're having an awesome 2021. As always, if you've already seen the title, you know that the video today is a bit different. A lot of you have been asking me in the comment section of my videos if a certain deck is good for climbing, is the, cert is, is the certain deck good for rank, or is the deck safe to craft? I hope that this video will kind of help answer that question as I suggest 5 nerf-proof decks that are powerful enough to take you to master's rank before the season ends and if you don't know the season end will the season will end on may 5 so you still have a lot of days to grind um to your desired rank whether you want to be from gold to platinum platinum to diamond diamond to masters whatever your rank goal is if you use the five decks that i suggest in this video those decks are powerful enough to help you reach that rank and i specifically chose decks that i don't think will get nerfed anytime soon for any of the upcoming balance patches because if you ask me directly um if you just really want the best decks right now of course i would recommend thresh nasus the best deck in the meta right now i would recommend tlc i would also recommend zoe leeson also the, these three decks are the one of are three of the strongest decks right now you really just want to rank up and if you already have them in your collection go for these three decks but if you're a relatively new player and if you don't have these decks yet and if you're looking for a new deck to craft but you're kind of scared that they might get nerfed in the upcoming patch this video will help you out with that out of the way um, let's start with the first deck the first deck that i'm recommending is ezreal draven this deck is a very strong deck, although not overpowered. It was overpowered before prior to the nerf to Ezreal and nerf to Captain Farron, but now it's in a really good place where you can craft it, you can master it without having fear that it will be nerfed in the upcoming balance patches. So overall, this is a very balanced deck. You have lots of good matchups, and even the quote-unquote bad matchups are still very winnable if you play it right, especially in lower ranks where usually your opponent doesn't play optimally uh, sorry to offend but from even in diamond uh, i find it very easy to play in diamond uh, i find the skill level to be very different from masters and diamond uh, in this version in particular i am running one draven's biggest fan instead of a third ballistic bot i saw this tech on mobilitics and it's actually very interesting because uh, usually you want Draven in your first three turns. Uh, so Draven's biggest ban is basically a fourth Draven, if you think about it. Because if you don't have Draven in your opening hand, if you have Draven's biggest fan, it's like you almost have a Draven. And it's a good turn one play. Usually you won't have turn one plays with this deck. Another thing that I like about this deck is that if you get tired of playing Ezreal and Draven, you can easily switch in Swain. I have videos on this. You can go with Draven Swain if you want a more mid-range uh, control deck. Um, and then you can go even Swain with Ezreal if you want to go a full-on control deck. Also, Ezreal Swain has better matchups against Trandelisandra because you can keep stunning their units with the combination of level 2 Swain and level 2 Ezreal. Draven Swain, on the other hand, have good matchups against Zoe Leeson. So that's what I like about this deck. Um, if you get tired, you can substitute Swain. You can even substitute Riven. There are Riven Draven decks actually that focus on Overwhelm. Um, there was a LeBlanc Ezreal deck before. I think it's still viable right now. So if you craft this deck, you just craft some extra units. You have more decks to play. You can even go discard Adro route with Jinx and Draven. So that's why I'm recommending this deck. It has been around for a while. It's very strong and you can branch out to other decks as well if you craft this one. Alright, the next deck that I recommend is Ash Noxus, specifically Ash LeBlanc. This is the current iteration of the deck right now. Previously, um, Ash was paired up with Sejuani. Sejuani is a Frostbite card, but now with the addition of the Reputation cards. Reputation. With the new Reputation cards, we now have access to LeBlanc, which is a very strong 3-cost unit. She will apply a lot of damage if left at answered because of her 5 attack and... Quick attack will allow her to usually take favorable trades, especially if you're attacking. And of course, much needed whispered words. One of the weaknesses of the deck before was is that we didn't have enough draw outside of Trifar and Assessor. But now with the addition of whispered words together with Trifar and Assessor, we can now cut Averil and Sendry for better cards. This version in particular is the one I use in the seasonal tournament open rounds. This is tech specifically against Thresh Nasus. So if you're facing lots of Thresh Nasus, this version will be good for you. We're running lots of freezes here. We're running triple flash freeze. We're running double harsh winds. And then we're even running some Ice Veil Archers and Brittle Steel. So we have lots of freezes in this deck. 
in general, this deck will always have a place in the meta because it is the ultimate counter to Demacia midrange decks, for example, against Jarvan Shen, against uh, Aesol Demacia, against Dragons. This is the ultimate counter because Freeze will make sure that you're winning almost every combat. And as we know, Demacia midrange is an archetype that's almost always present in every meta. Which means that Ash Frostbite will also always have a good matchup in the meta because the nature because of the nature of the freeze. And I forgot to mention we also have a favorable matchup against Zoe Leeson because we, we exert a lot of mid-game pressure and we have freeze to delay the Leeson. So he can't really OTK us with all our freezes. As long as we maintain our board, we can keep pressuring on our attack turn. And on their attack turn, we freeze the Leeson so that they don't kill us. Another reason why I would recommend this deck right now, because there was a new version running around actually, which is very fun to play, which is the Legion Marauders version. Basically, you take in triple Marauders, you take in triple Strength in Numbers, and I think you remove Hearthguard and uh, Trifarian Assessor. I think that's the those are the changes in that deck in particular. This version of the deck is very fun to play. I might have a gameplay video on Marauders coming. But I'm not sure if I will be able to edit it in time before the seasonals. The main difference between the two versions is that um, Ashley Blanc, um, the standard one, is good against Thresh Nasus and Zoe Leeson, whereas the Marauders version absolutely destroys Trundle, Lissandra Control. So if you have access to both decks, you can kind of switch around what you're playing depending on what you're facing in ladder. If you're facing Thresh Nasus, Zoe Leeson, go with the standard version, and if you're facing lots of TLC, Trundle, Lissandra Control, Go with the Legion Marauders version. And I'm pretty sure that as more failure than our as more Noxus champs are added, this archetype will keep upgrading. I don't see a nerf coming to this archetype anytime soon. It is very safe to craft right now. The third deck in my list is Nightfall Aggro. I actually use Nightfall Aggro in my NA account during my claim from Platinum to Masters. I was playing the deck a lot in Platinum and Diamond level and I had around 80% win rate with it. This is the most flexible aggro deck in my opinion. You have lots of ways to win with this deck. Just to mention a few, you can win with elusive damage to the Flight and Lunar Shadestalker. You can win through a big attack with Nocturne. If you have lots of units, you can make everything fearsome. If your opponent is not prepared for it, it's a very huge damage with Nocturne. You can also win through a leveled up Diana. Diana levels up very easily in this deck, so if you're able to chip down the HP of your enemy, um, you can use level up Diana, keep increasing her attack, and then finish off with Atrocity. We also have Moonlight Affliction if you can set up good attacks together with high attack units like Crescent Guardian or Stygian Onlooker. So there are lots of ways to win with this deck. In my opinion, this is also the aggro deck that wins almost all aggro matchups, although not all. Um, because you have access to Doom Beast, which drains from the enemy nexus, so you burn your enemy nexus, your enemy nexus, and you add HP to yours. Um, and you can do that repeatedly with Onto Dusk. Onto Dusk is a very flexible card. You can use it in multiple ways. You can use it on Doom Beast, as I said earlier, to drain. You can use it on Nocturne to reduce the attack of your opponent's units. Then on your defense turn, you can reduce the attack to reduce the number of damage you take. On your attack turn, you can reduce the attack so that. Your opponent won't have fearsome blockers for a huge nocturne attack. You can also use it on Diana to get the double activation on the level up Diana. There are lots of ways that you can use um, onto the skier, and sometimes you can even use it on Crescent Guardian or Stigian Onlooker to increase their attack if you want to push more damage. And to top that off, we have G Gifts from Beyond, which gives you a flexible weapon that you can use depending on the situation. Unspeakable Horror is kind of a draw or card generation engine for the deck in addition to Fail Cascade. Actually, I forgot to mention, I have a climbing guide for almost all the decks that I will feature here. I will put the links in the description below. The Nightfall Aggro is actually a very recent climbing guide. I use it to climb to Masters in my NA account. So in case you're doubting the power levels of the decks, feel free to check out the videos. Alright, the fourth deck that I'm recommending is Tam Soraka. This is growing to be one of my favorite control decks right now. Tam Soraka has always been a counter to champion-centric decks. So in the current meta, we have Thresh Nasus, we have Zoe Lee Sin, and we have Tron D'Alessandra. Um, Tam, Tam Kench Soraka has favorable matchups against all three of those decks. And even in prior metas, if you've uh, played in the previous meta, Aphelios TF was a deck back then, and uh, Tam Soraka is one of the counters to that deck. Right now, in ladder, I think this is good to use since there are lots of Thresh Nasus running around right now. There are lots of Leesens, there are lots of TLCs. 
Um, Tamkin Soraka is a good deck for you to climb if you're facing those decks in particular. Especially the Thresh Nasus lineup. If you've already seen my video on the seasonal tournament, I put out some games there against Thresh Nasus. Tamkin Soraka absolutely destroys that deck. And in future metas, don't worry. I think Tamkin Soraka will kind of always have a place in the meta because most strong decks or most tier 1 decks are usually champion centric and in the future if you're looking to join tournaments time catch soraka is a very solid pick depending on the meta you can build your lineup around it just like how i did for the seasonal tournament open rounds and finally the last deck in my list is shivana dragons or shivana asol so the first question that you might ask me is why not zoe asol why shivana asol over zoe asol well i have three reasons actually for that First is that Shivana Aesol has better matchups against the meta decks right now. Shivana overall provides mid-game pressure that will be very hard to deal with for Nasus decks, for Trandelessandra decks, and for Zoe Leeson decks. Those three decks in particular usually don't deal well with big units, so if you're able to have a leveled up Shivana or a big uh, screeching dragon with the help of dragon chow usually they won't be able to deal with it in the mid game and you can safely transition into your late game with Aesol. The second reason is that I think there might be a chance that some of the tools from the Zoe Aesol deck, the invoke units, they might get nerfed in the balance patch. I'm not really sure. Um, Targon has been a strong region for a while now. I'm not sure how Riot will approach it. So I think the Dragon deck, the Dragon version, the Shivana version of the deck is much more, um, much more likely to not get nerfed compared to the Zoe Aesol version. And the third reason is that I really think that dragons are cool. That's just about it. I really find the dragons cool. Even in Yu-Gi-Oh! before, I really loved dragon decks because they just look so cool. So obviously in Runeterra, I would prefer a Shivana dragon deck over a Zoe Aesol deck. Overall, the deck doesn't really have a matchup where you feel particularly unfavored. Um, you're usually going to lose if you have a bad draw. But this version in particular is teched hard against aggro, so we're running Zoe instead of uh, Ace Hall to have mo one more unit in the early game. We're also running Lauren Protege, which can be a very useful unit to kill off some aggro units. And we're running Sorison Forger, of course, to help us get back into the game. We're running two copies of Star Shaping and two copies of Judgment to board clear aggro decks. I saw this version on Mobile Uh I tried it for myself, and I actually used this deck when climbing from 0 to 300 LP. And I was chasing LP for the leaderboard. Oh, never mind. I'm using my NA account. Anyway, um, I use I use this deck in my SEA account to climb from zero to three hundred LP. I'm not sure if I'll be able to put out a climb guide on that one. It might already be too late in the season. Uh, it might not be useful anymore. So maybe next season, if we get some upgrades to the Shivana Asol archetype, I might make a climb guide on that one. And that's it for the five decks. Um, some honorable mentions, of course, as I mentioned earlier, DLC, Lee Sin, Thresh Nasus. If you have already crafted these decks, these three are very good for climbing right now. Um, Zoe Asol also is very good, but as I mentioned earlier, I prefer Shivana Asol over Zoe Asol. TF is actually, if you played TF is in the previous meta prior to the nerf, and if you're good at the deck, TF is still very good right now. Don't believe the players saying that TF is shit right now. TF is still a strong deck. That's it for the list. I hope that you will enjoy these type of videos. I usually put these types of videos out when the season is about to end, when we're waiting for a new patch, when I kind of played all the decks already. Um, that's when I make videos where I just talk about the game in general. If you want uh, more topics like this, please let me know. If you like these types of videos or if you have any topic suggestions, please let me know in the comment section below. For four of the five decks that I suggested here, I, I've already put out climbing guides for those. I will be putting the links in the description if you want to see the decks in action. Except for the dragons one, I think the video for the dragons is not yet out. But I will try to put it out before the patch hits. So that's it guys, I hope that you reach your decide rank. Just remember May 5, May 5 is the deadline. So just to be safe, reach your decide rank by May 4. Thank you for watching. If you like the video, please leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe. I hope that you have a nice day. Bye-bye.